On April 8, 1964, NASA conducted the first mission of the Gemini program, namely, Gemini 1. What fired everyone then and even now up is the presence of holes in the body of the Titan II rocket. It turns out that, unlike the Saturn V or any of the traditional rockets that separated their stages when one stage finished before the other fired, Titan II's two stages fired while they connected and those holes are vent for the upper stage. These are considered the original ideas for the hot stage technique that we witnessed on the second orbital flight of the SpaceX Starship in November last year. The success of the test marked a new step in the aerospace industry, given that hot staging was successfully used on a reusable rocket on this scale for the first time. So, how did SpaceX upgrade this technique to suit Starship? Elon Musk unveiled new detail on Starship separation in IFT2. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Until now, perhaps Elon Musk is still shocked whenever thinking about what the hot staging performed during Flight 2. In a SpaceX company talk in January, Elon Musk could not hide his emotion. That was an amazing achievement. So I was like, wow, that's... And it worked. Um, so I was like, wow. After months of effort, the SpaceX team was finally able to upgrade this technology, which could only work on expendable rockets at a smaller scale. The hot staging concept means throttling down and shutting down most of the booster engines while firing the rocket's next stage engines. Obviously, at that time, the two stages were still intertwined. Hot staging is advantageous because it gives the upper stage an extra boost and thereby a small, extra payload capacity while reducing the complexity of stage separation. Additionally, it would solve the problem of settling the second stage propellant at the ignition of Starship. Switching to the next stage on a rocket is a tricky operation, especially while still in the atmosphere. As soon as you shut down the lower stage engines, the rocket stops accelerating forward. Gravity and air resistance start robbing velocity. The fuel in the upper stage tanks begins to float in weightlessness, which makes it hard to direct that fuel to the upper stage engines so you can light them. The stages don't naturally drift apart, that drag on the front of the rocket actually wants to keep them stuck together. Most rockets implement some kind of pushing system to shove the upper stage forward and away from the lower stage. Some rockets like Saturn V use ullage motors which are relatively small, independently fueled rocket engines that may be fired prior to main engine ignition when the vehicle is in a zero-g situation. The resulting acceleration causes the liquid in the rocket's main tanks to settle towards the aft end ensuring uninterrupted flow to the fuel and oxidizer pumps. For the Falcon 9, this is a literal pusher arm named the pneumatic pusher that shoved the upper stage by pushing on the engine. The hot staging's downside is you're starting one or more powerful rocket engines inside the top of the lower stage. This requires adding vents for that exhaust pressure to escape and protecting the top of the upper stage so that it isn't destroyed in the process both in case you want to recover and reuse that lower stage, and because blowing up a rocket tank right behind your upper stage could send debris flying and cause damage to the upper stage. This technique is just applied to multi-stage rockets, for example, on Soviet-era Russian rockets such as Soyuz and Proton-M. The N-1 rocket was designed to use hot staging, however, none of the test flights lasted long enough for this to occur. Starting with the Titan II, the Titan family of rockets used hot staging. SpaceX retrofitted its Starship rocket to use hot staging on its second flight. The difference here is that, first, the hot staging is used on the most gigantic rocket ever built. Second, Starship is fully reusable, meaning all parts on the rocket must be intact after launch and land. This poses a new challenge for Elon Musk's team, as they must ensure that the thrust of the three Raptor central engines in the spacecraft does not damage the ring or top dome at stage separation. Because Titan II GLV is an expendable vehicle, it does not matter if the hot staging of the upper stage destroys the vented interstage at separation. So, how did SpaceX upgrade this technique to suit Starship? The hot staging ring placed on the booster is measured by 1.8 meters or 6 feet in thickness. The inside of the ring is designed with a dome that covers the whole base of it. Its slope will deflect the exhaust gas and make it easier for the flow to flow out through the vent. Simultaneously, the three sea-level Raptor engines in the upper stage will gimbal out to about 30 degrees to use the slope on the booster shield as well as possible. 
This contributes to protecting the forward dome of the Super Heavy, ensuring the reusability standard. At the top of the ring, the hull points will attach to the ship during flight. Those at the bottom are connected to the top of the booster. To help gas release, the vents on the ring are opened significantly, but not much. Because if those vents open too wide, it will compromise the area stability. By contrast, too closed will make the interstage burst due to the extremely hot temperature. Therefore, the engineer must find a balance point between the two interests. Especially, it will get trickier if the booster gets lighter. It makes sense because the lighter the booster is, the higher the acceleration on the whole stack. After consuming the majority of propellant for the liftoff stage, the booster will be gradually empty during ascent. This pushes against the second stage with all that acceleration and the hot staging ring in between will receive force the most. So a durable ring is a must unless SpaceX wants it crushed, in which case. It can be said that the hot stage technique greatly benefits the rocket during launch. However, it is not the only staging method in rocketry. In fact, in addition to hot staging, there are four more stage separation techniques. Now, let's talk about serial staging that was used on Saturn V. Stages are attached, one on top of the other, or stacked. The first stage ignites at launch and burns through its fuel until its propellants are spent. Now, useless dead weight. In a staging maneuver, the first stage breaks free from the previous stage, then begins burning through the next stage in straight succession. It can be said that retro rockets like Saturn V create a clear separation between the spent stage and the active stage, which then has room for fire. Whereas serial staging involves stacked stages, parallel staging features one or multiple booster stages strapped to a central sustainer, as on the space shuttle. At launch, all the engines ignite. When their propellant runs out, the strapped-on boosters fall away. The sustainer engine keeps burning to put the payload into orbit. With the shuttle, solid rocket boosters are the stages that fall away from the main sustainer, the external tank that feeds the main engines. The Titan III is an example of a rocket that uses both serial and parallel staging. It used a two-stage Titan II as the sustainer and added two solid rocket stages as boosters that fell away once they were done, much like the SARBs on the shuttle. The next up is about stage and a half. This less common staging has a main core that acts like a sustainer stage and a booster stage that falls away during the flight. This dates back to the Atlas D that launched John Glenn in 1962 and the three Mercury astronauts who followed in his orbiting footprints. At the time, the upper stages of multi-stage rockets often didn't fire on time and rockets blew up. To make sure the engines all ignited properly, it made sense to Atlas designers to have all engines ignite while the rocket was still on the launch pad. Dropping the booster was also sort of part of the main stage was how it dropped the dead weight in flight making the rocket light enough to put a mercury capsule into orbit. Last but not least, have you ever heard about single staging? More a dream in development than a current reality. A single stage rocket is a simpler technology that doesn't require multiple complicated and dangerous stages to get through the atmosphere. In 2017, New Mexico-based ARC, a space corporation announced that it was developing the world's first single stage to orbit launch vehicle that can deliver both a small payload and itself into low Earth orbit at a cost of about $1 million per launch. Dubbed the HIAS-2, CA after the 16th century rocket pioneer Conrad Haas, the new booster uses a linear aerospike engine instead of conventional bell-shaped rocket engines to do away with multiple stages. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.